<laughs> I might have. Did you hear about that rumor about beer karma? Beer karma? You drink one of these and a Victorian cops one? Oh, really? <laughs> Time to invent the footy. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Grassroots Online, a new concept brought to you by the South Australian Amateur Football League and our good sponsors at West End. I'm your host, Tommy Javor, and I'd like to welcome co host the footy chick, Lisa Wright. Thank you, Javor. It's, uh, it's good to be back, and yes, uh, absolutely, we are grassroots and we are now on the interweb. And uh, at some stage, either this week or next week, we'll actually give you details on how you can upload it to your phone uh, or watch it on your computer. So, uh, going to be a slightly or very different format this year, but we're going to go through that uh, with our CEO, Grant Goodall, in the next segment. Yeah, I think uh, one of the things we're going to touch on with Grant will probably be uh, the accessibility of the great show that has been Grassroots over the years. Now being online, you can watch it when you want. That pressure of having to watch it on a Thursday at 8.30, it did conflict with a lot of uh, other commitments for football players. So this will give you a chance, especially when we're at your club, to check out how your club looks to the rest of uh, the South Australian Amateur Football League. And the best thing is too, we're not stuck in the studio anymore, so it means that we're going to spend more time out at your club, meaning that your club's going to get a heap, heap more experience. Exposure. So uh, watch out for us at a club, your club, very, very soon. Of course, later on in this show, uh, you'll get a chance to have a look at the Ingle Farm Football Club, won't you, Lisa? We did. We, uh, we did our first footy trip out there for the year and uh, just to see how the uh, all the new players out at Ingle Farm are doing. Yep. So if you'd like us to get to, out to your club sooner rather than later, by all means, contact us or the Amateur League and we're more than happy to come out and accommodate those people that would really like to... Uh, Put their club out there on the, uh, did you call it the interweb? The interweb. The interweb. The interweb. Right, Lisa, let's talk about round one of the uh, South Australian Amateur Football League because it was an absolute cracker, a barn burner. Um, Absolutely, especially Div 1. Div 1, you couldn't, you couldn't tip. The only game Absolutely you could tip would have been uh, probably the Henley Jeps Cross game, a replay of last year's first semi final, but in this, this time it was Henley by 99 points. Yeah, no, uh, I think the tipsters, uh, your average tipster probably would have picked one uh, last week, and if you picked Five, you did one. You have, you know, nothing about amateur league football. <laughs> Absolutely, and the big guns. The, I mean, you talk about your Goodwood Saint perennially the uh, or the, the the measuring stick beaten by ten goals by Foss Camden, Gazer beaten by five goals by the recently promoted Ross Trevor. Kept goals in the first half, I hear. Somewhat of a phenomenon, really. Is it, is it too early to yell out premiership? Hang on. I, th I think it might be. I think <laughs> with Goodwood playing Gazer this week, uh, that will tell us a lot. Absolutely. I think, oh, I think about both teams as well, not just the, uh, the current premiers. Ab there. Absolutely. Now, I mean, Spock were too good for Salisbury North. Again, another promoted team. And, and it was uh, all, all teams in Division 1, 2 and 3 that were promoted actually had wins this week. Uh, a unique statistic. Uh, as in uh, 5 and 6 as well. Um, right? Actually, Clinton was the only promoted club that didn't win in round one. Doggies let us down, never won. Now, the team I want to talk about in Div 1 is the Broadview Football Club because they have taken, uh, I mean, shock were one questionable umpire decision away from Premiership last year. They were there and thereabouts for sure. Broadview have handed them an absolute hiding, really, uh, to the good of 62 points. And uh, Broadview, they, uh, they remind me a lot of Gazer Circa 2011. Uh, just good things coming from Broadview. Uh, of course, big recruit Kane Ackland. Uh, the dish licker, Tom Schlicker, um, who uh, Coach Phil Harrison can't actually pronounce that. It's Schlicker, Phil, if you're watching, Schlicker. And a young boy from court named Damien Tham doing good things on the weekend, as well as uh, those previous recruits from Modbury. All starting to really gel. Watch out for the Broadview Tigers and, of course, Andy Reid off a halfback flag. The Flash. Oh, he's an incredible footballer and a lot of uh, exciting things coming out of Broadview this year. Well, it'll be good to see if they can. Um, obviously, they tasted Premiership success a couple of years ago to get them back into Div 1. Um, but but uh, trying to find their feet since, and uh, yeah, it'd be good to see them do good things this year. In Division 2, um, the thing that stood out to me is uh, Tea Tree Gully uh, have come down from Div 1 and perhaps they're only visiting Div 2 for a season because they've absolutely smashed Old Diggies by 14 goals and the Twin Towers of Stephen Pitt and Eric Kells recruited from Goodwood Saints to kick 12 between them. Yes, seven, Very hard yeah, to stop. seven oh, goals for uh, Stephen Pitt, so 
um, at his age, still uh, still kicking a few sausage rolls there. Absolutely uh, fantastic. And if you read everything you, uh, or if you see everything you read on, believe everything you read on the internet, excuse me, you'd believe that Adelaide Junior and Port District were already going to play in the Div 2 Grand Final. Well, both these teams have been touched up uh, by the promoted teams. Flinders Park uh, took care of Adelaide Junior and it was Portland in uh, probably the biggest upset I've heard of. Uh, for a round one game, defeated Port Districts by eight points. Yeah, I dropped into Portland after the uh, after the game on my way back from uh, Effleton, and uh, you would think a oh, steamboat had won a grand final. They said the way he celebrated when the when the uh, final siren went. So uh, uh, no, good on Portland. Um, they've proved their worth already um, by beating a, a premiership contender in Div Two. So uh, we'll see how they go for the rest of the season. And here's a uh, interesting statistic for you, Lisa, that I uh, put forward on the other great. Uh, show that's sponsored by West End on WOW FM. Um, the Div 2 Premiership has now, uh, in the last 13 years, has been won by 13 different clubs. Is that right? That is correct. I thought you'd like that. Well, you're a lot of knowledge, Tom. <laughs> yeah, I've got too much time on my hands. <laughs> okay, what else uh, took your fancy there, Lise, this weekend? Um, oh, well, Paul Smithfield. Smithfield, welcome back to the Amateur League after a hiatus for a year. Great to have the Cats back. Absolutely. Um, however, they had a bit of a baptism of fire playing Mitchell Park, um, who are also some favourites in the Div 7 there, and got uh, absolutely spanked to the tune of about 28 goals. Um, the McDonald brothers had an absolute field day uh, with, I think, Luke kicking 12 and Nate kicking 11. So, um, between them. yeah, absolutely. Um, if we could actually just go through some, can we go through some yeah, other local We can do whatever you want. Oh, that's fine. Fair show. No worries. Um, we'll do a bit of a, a league leading goal kickers, I think, every week just to uh, keep people up to date on who's going to reach that magic ton first. Um, as we said, we've got the McDonald's there on, uh, on 12 and 11 each. Um, followed by Mick Gilling um, of Hope Valley, uh, who in the reserves kicked a, uh, another load of 10 goals. Good on you, Mick. And uh, Jamie Atkinson of Salisbury West, uh, who kicked nine. And then we had about four players on eight and four players on seven. Fair, uh, fair spread of goal kickers there. Um, the other, the other result, our good friend of ours, Sean Holland, recently taken over Century United, 0-1. So we wish Dutchie all the best in uh, his future pursuit, uh, moving into coaching. Uh, recent father, I, I hear? Yes, to an absolute gorgeous little baby Mia. She's absolutely beautiful. Um, and it was actually, I think, his 33rd birthday on Saturday as well. So uh, um, not a good result for poor Dutchie there. No. Um, actually, just before we head off to our uh, our first break, if you've got nothing else, no. um, just uh, to let everyone know, uh, Hope Valley have got their past players day this week. If Anyone out there, if you want to plug your past, uh, past players, well, they are past players by the end of the day, um, past players day, um, simply uh, uh, drop us an email and uh, we'll get some details of where you can send that to shortly as well. Um, just a couple of milestones. Uh, one last week, Andrew Graham, the man they call the Shrek, uh, played his 150th game uh, for the Kilburn Football Club in round one. Well. Yeah, and uh, and uh, one of the leaders, um, who, I, who I call a true leader of our club, Michael Gow, Mickey, um, plays his 100 games for Hope Valley this weekend. You've got all the Hope Valley scoops, don't you? Well. I'm just sort of slightly yeah, involved with them, just just in case you didn't know out there. Uh, well, well, I think we'll be back after this break if there's such a break. <laughs> with uh, <laughs> after this, our very next grab will feature um, the chief executive officer of the South Australian Amateur Football League, uh, Grant Goodall, doing great things in the 101st year of the South Australian Amateur Football League. Back soon. Welcome back to the second segment of Grassroots now. Every year, it's, I guess, obligatory, or we could call it a tradition, but we always have a chat to the CEO of the league, and this year, we've actually got a different face staring us in the computer, or your phone, wherever you're watching it from, and that is our new CEO, Grant Goodall. Grant, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Lisa. Wow, a heap has been happening over the summer. Tell us a bit about it. It's been busy. Uh, lots of new faces that's here in the Amateur League, lots of new initiatives, uh, a few new sponsors, a new program we've chosen to take grassroots online and uh, it's great to see you and Tommy taking to the microphone and the, and the camera this year so uh, there'll be competitions we thank West End for their support as well absolutely uh, couldn't have done this without them so uh, thanks to all the team down at uh, Lion Nathan and West End but look uh, just to flag some of the projects most people would be aware that the project uh, that's been going for well over three years on the drawing board the lights here at Thibbon and Oval uh, it was one of the first projects I took on. Very pleased that we made the SANFL Eagles Port match within hours really of it going. Mm -hmm. um, they had a tremendous crowd, it was a record crowd, so the lights have already been a success. We're looking forward to uh, a number of games here through the season at amateur league level. 
Uh, look, we've made a lot of improvements um, to our systems. We've got a new website. We've got uh, a footy, footy web, that new uh, football player management system that we're working on as well. Uh, we've just finished our first uh, opening round. And look, I think for a new system uh, and the, the amount of change we had here, I thought Sporting Pulse uh, footy web held up very well. Um, and, you know, as with all new things, uh, there's always a few things you can improve. Uh, we've got the new look Sunday Mail. I'd have to acknowledge the work that Jeff Hurd did Absolutely. there in terms of getting that together and thank all the clubs for their support in terms of um, all chipping in really to give Amateur League such a professional look in the Sunday Mail every every week. Um, yeah, look, we've got a new catering manager here at Thebin and Oval. Uh, look, the list goes on, so there's a lot of things happening and uh, it's going to be an exciting season. Absolutely. Now, Thebby, as we've all lovingly known it for X and X amount of years now, has a new name. It does, Adelaide Airport Stadium. Uh, I think it reflects, uh, the stadium certainly reflects that we're more than an oval. We have our function room. Um, you know, we are looking to develop the oval beyond the lights. We've got a long-term plan to perhaps try and get some funding to improve our function room or perhaps build up. It's been on the drawing board for quite some years, so we'll chip away at that over the next few years. Other new sponsors, we've had the uh, the Greyhounds come on board and many clubs have used them successfully for fundraising already. Uh, Army Reserves um, have signed up recently, uh, so there'll be some Army Reserve promotion at Thibbert and Oval over the, the season. Uh, West End, I've mentioned before, a uh, fantastic sponsor. Adelaide Airport, a uh, fantastic local sponsor. And, and here at the West Orange Council too, we're supported by the Council as well as Community Football League uh, and Sample as well, good supporters. So we've got a good list of sponsors on board this year and uh, there's a couple in the pipeline. Yeah, I just can't believe how much stuff has actually gone on over the past six months um, to get where we are now and everything's just moving along really nicely now. Um, I guess let's go into a bit um, what we're doing here at the moment. So um, as you know, we've decided to take grassroots uh, online. Um, I guess. Um, tell us a few of the benefits um, about taking grassroots uh, online. Well, the benefits are we have total control. Um, there are restrictions around community TV and radio, so we have a little bit more flexibility. Uh, the presenters, so you and Tommy, will have greater flexibility. But the clubs also get flexibility in the fact that uh, they can really watch this at any stage. So if they want to download this and put it up on their screen or put it on their iPad, or get it on their iPhone, watch it at home, watch it at the club, watch it any time. Um, it really does bring the internet and the new wave of technology uh, right into the heart of uh, Amateur League. And we certainly think that it gives people the flexibility right around the world. We've already had people from London and Hong Kong indicate that they're looking to look at the program online. And, um, you know, all those tens of thousands of people that are involved interstate and overseas will be able to get a really good look at what's going on. So it creates a lot more flexibility. It's a new world and um, we certainly are excited with our new sponsor to get a lot of people watching the show. Absolutely and we can say West End as many times as we like and we can drink beer because we're online and we can do what we like but it must be West End because West End is our sponsor. <laughs> Yes, well said. So, and, and we thank West End. Yeah, so, yeah, so I, you know, we certainly encourage feedback and um, you know we, we're very confident that this new format's going to be successful. No, and look, so am I. And uh, once again, um, I guess on behalf of Tommy and myself, we thank you for the opportunity. Um, and as I said, you know, the club's really going to benefit from this because we're now going to be able to get out to the mall, which is fantastic. So, Good. Um, Grant, thanks very much for having a chat. Um, and, uh, and all the best for a smooth running of the year. A pleasure, or as the uh, politicians say, good to be with you. <laughs> Thanks, Grant. And uh, once again, we will be back very shortly with the first footy trip for the year at Ingle Farm. Welcome, Rooters, and welcome for the first time to Grassroots Online. That's Grassroots Online. Remember that name because you're going to see us every week on location. And this week, our very first location is the Hello Turf of the Ingle Farm Football Club. The very club where 30 years ago, nearly to the day, I made my debut. And I tell you what, it feels like, well it feels like 30 years ago to be honest, but it's great to be back. We're looking forward to a, a team that has been, um, let's, it's almost fair to say, filled with controversy over the summer months. Um, many, many uh, different transfers and a lot of talk on the internet about what's happening at the Ingle Farm Football Club. But I'm sure it's going to be an exciting year in Division 6 for the Farmers. 
We're looking forward to getting around the club, meeting some of the interesting people, and hopefully giving you a good introduction into the team that I think is going to make an impact on Div 6, the Ingle Farm Football Club. As the hunt for club legends continues, TJ's done it again. I've found one. This is the legendary, perhaps even infamous, Chris Pike. Welcome to the show, Chris. Thank you. Now, obviously, uh, a lot of people would know your son, Martin. You must be so proud of what Martin accomplished in the AFL. I am certainly. Several premierships and uh, a lot of good stories. Um, but we're here for the Ingle Farm Football Club. Tell us, what has it that brings you back? to the Ingle Farm Football Club year after year. Someone just told me outside you've been involved for 62 years. <laughs> I wish. 36 years, perhaps. Uh, 36, yes. Yeah. And, and have you, you must have done so many roles in those 36 years. I have. Yeah. Ranging from canteen, team manager. I haven't ever coached, though. Not the football side of things, anyway. Uh, kitchen, you name it, I've probably done it. And are you looking forward to a big year for the Bulldogs? I am. Quite excited about this year. We've got a lot of new recruits, and um, we're hopeful. But you know, we need to um, just consolidate into the, the division we're in, and next year go for the higher level and then keep rising. In 36 years, is there one highlight year that stands out in your mind? Uh, no, not really. It's been a long time since the Premiership. That that was a highlight. But my highlight in this place is, is basically the kids, the plays, always has been. My, my first involvement was with juniors and I am still very heavily involved with the juniors and the juniors is what keeps you going. No worries. Now I noticed the sign on the way in says Ingle Farm, the family club. It's obviously something close to your heart because I don't know if we can pan across with the high tech equipment we've got. But just over here, just over here, we have uh, Chris's grandson. G'day mate, how are you? What's your name? Uh, Matt. Well done. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't ready for that. Yeah. Thanks very much for joining us and we wish your club all the best this year. Thank you very much. Now, the Doggies have actually fought off relegation for the second year in a row by the hair on a you-know-what's, uh, you-know-what. And uh, so what they've done this year is they've bought in the big guns. So we've got new A-grade coach Wayne Knowles with us at the moment. Wayne, thanks for having a chat with us today. No drums. Beautiful. Now, um, Wayne, give us a bit of a background on, uh, on where you've come from, um, where you've uh, been before and what you're doing here now. Um, well, I played a little bit junior footy down here at Ingle Farm. I played 134 games, junior games. Um, I left here and went and played a bit of country footy. Uh, Played Snowtown, Two Worlds, um, South Broken Hill. Played in the Premiership in 2006 in South Broken Hill. Um, then come back to Adelaide, uh, was coaching the C grade at Parry Hills and then the B grade last year and um, decided to come back this year, back to my home club. Now, a uh, bit of controversy here where uh, uh, you said to the club that this is where I want to finish my career and that's what you've done, um, but you've ended up uh, bringing just a couple of lads along with you. Um, yeah, a couple of boys. I, um, Brought along, there's probably, I think there's 11 in total. Um, Just a couple? Yeah, well, they're, you know, but they're not away graders. Um, let's be honest about that. There's a few blokes that um, have just come along to have a bit of a kick in the, in the B's and C's, which, are, you know, which is good. Gives us numbers, which gives us depth, and that's what we're looking for here. Absolutely. So, uh, do we call you Ingle Hills or do we call you Para Farm this year? I uh, can call us whatever you want to call us, really. We're just, um, we're just happy to go along for the ride with seats. Would you like to call yourself Premiers? Um, no, definitely not. No, no, not at this stage. Um, we're going to go through a rebuilding stage. Um, our premiership would be nice. Um, yeah, I've signed up for three years with the whole intent to try and turn this joint around. Absolutely, and uh, looks like you're going the right way about it by uh, bringing over all the lads. And it looks uh, everything's really looking up here this year. So uh, we wish you all the best of the year, and thanks again for having me. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Stupid questions, yes, that segment that everyone loves, where we stitch up a few blokes at each club by asking them absolutely ridiculous questions. I have my three guinea pigs here for the day. Gentlemen, could you please tell me your name, your grade, and what position you play? Uh, 
Uh, Wayne Round, I'm in the B grade, I'm a centerman. Mark Smart, C grade, uh, forward pocket. And Sean Cummins, A grade, centerman. Beautiful. Fellas, so uh, what do you love about the Eagle Farm Football Club? Uh, the people, mainly. You know, a good group of people down here. Always like a good drink, play hard footy. You know, nice and fair. That's the way it should be. Yeah, the people rock, but the sunset's bloody beautiful, mate, let me tell you. Yeah, just the mateship and the facilities at the Eagle Farm Football Club, second and other day, rest of the facilities. Okay, let's stitch up a few blokes here. Who at the Eagle Farm Football Club looks at themselves in the mirror the most? Smarties sitting next to me. <laughs> <laughs> Lockie Sam to go, for sure. <laughs> yeah, my bet's Lockie too, just quietly. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, and uh, which player has the best moves on the dance floor? No. I reckon Robbie Ewan goes alright, he's had a bit of a run. Rowdy's got the role, but uh, definitely Bucky. And who would Bucky be when he's at home? Uh, little Nathan Buck. Beautiful. And I'd like Stevie Gamble. Would, would anyone care to give us an example of uh, these fellas' moves for us? God. Uh, and finally, which of your fellow teammates tends to use too much product? Shannon Noel by more, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's Betty. Ah, uh, gee, who uses too much product? Not you, obviously. <laughs> Thank you very much, I do. <laughs> Lots of hair, let me tell you. Um, I would have to say the coach, just quietly. Have a look at the A-grade coach, he looks like a bit of a melon. We have a spin around here. There it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a fruit hook. <laughs> and, uh, and finally, your pick for uh, who uses too much product? Yeah, I reckon that was me too. He doesn't mind how to Well, there you have it. We'll stitch up a few blokes, fellas. Thanks for your time. Cheers. Best Thank of the you. season. Thank you. Well, it's been a big night down at the Ingle Farm Kennel, home of the doggies. And I tell you what, it's great to just get one rubbed out nice and easily at the end of the night before I head upstairs for some sponsors product. And uh, I look forward to many more football trips this year. Thanks, girls. Thanks for joining us on Grassroots. Speechless, as many a lady is. <laughs> Welcome back to Grassroots Online, the uh, final segment of the evening, or the afternoon as it is at the moment at least. Um, it's been an interesting first up effort, I think. Well, I hope it's been an interesting uh, first up effort and of course we're always uh, looking on ways to improve Grassroots. So um, if you've watched it tonight and thought, good Lord, um, it could probably do with a bit of this and a bit of that, um, please, please send us an email, um, which uh, as I said will pop up on the screen shortly, um, but will be grassroots at s-a-a-f-l.asn.au or .com.au Maybe there's a backslash in there Maybe somewhere. Maybe there's a backslash in there somewhere. That's right, we'll get it to. Um, but by all means, uh, uh, send us some feedback. Um, you know, at the end of the day, you're the clubs, this is your show, and, uh, and we'll certainly do whatever it takes to, uh, to keep you watching. Enough with the comedy, it's uh, www s-a-a-f-l-a-s-n-a-u That's the website. As seen uh, brilliantly uh, illustrated with a nice shot of John Floriani there uh, in the results section of the paper each Sunday. Beautiful work there, Jeff Hurd, I think it was mentioned a bit earlier. Absolutely. Now, um, and just before we go uh, any further, um, we failed to mention how could we look at this fantastic football um, supplied to us by our lovely sponsors at Sharon, um, which of course uh, everyone will be using this year. Now, Lisa, of course, with the, I think it's 67, 68 different uh, clubs and 220 something teams, uh, something along those lines. It'd be very difficult to preview every game or all the big games, so I've just picked out a couple of quick ones this week. Uh, firstly, the, the Goodwood Gazer match. It's at Goodwood Oval. I mean, for years these guys have been butting heads, and uh, who would have thought that they'd both be 0 and 1? Absolutely. It's a huge game. Uh, is there a Premiership hangover? I think we'll find out by 5 o'clock on Saturday. I think we will. I think we will. I, I think Gays will bounce back. They haven't lost too many players, and those players that have lost have been adequately replaced. Um, is it an issue, the fact that their ground isn't ready? They won't be playing their home ground games at home this year. Oh, look, I think psychologically it's always going to have a bit of effect when you're not, uh, when you don't have that home ground advantage. Um, but uh, as I said, the grass seems to be going down on uh, on the Clemsey Coval at the moment. Slowly so but Very, very slowly but surely. So um, hopefully they'll be back on it soon. But look, you know, if uh, if they are as mentally strong, and I'm sure Nathan Grange has got it all in their heads, that it doesn't matter where they play, um, they're a good side and they only lost one game last year for a reason. So um, I don't think that's going to make much of a difference to them. We will see. The other one in Div 1 that I really uh, like is a... Uh, uh, it's hard to believe. They're playing for top spot, Henley and Foss Camden. Both big winners in week one. Um, well, they're not both going to win this week, so uh, 
I think Henley are going to be the, one of the teams to watch for sure this week, and uh, Henley, for me, uh, should stamp the authority on Foss Camden this week. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as I said, definite first, uh, uh, very, very good first up effort uh, by Foss, um, especially uh, to get the wood over good wood um, like that, and especially by such a such a big margin. But you know, look, Henley are a force and are you know one of the premiership favourites in any given year, and uh, I think they'll prove that again this Saturday. I think we and the boys will be really looking to make the Skull Cave a bit of a fortress this year, big oval, and they should be able to play it better than other teams. Absolutely. In Division 2, it's the Battle of the Reds that interests me. It's Flinders Park and PAC. Flinders Park with the first up win. PAC knocking off a uh, relegator from Div 1, Eastern Park. It's going to be a crucial game for two teams, I think, that will feature in finals action. It's a bit of a toss of a coin job for me, but I, I, I love what Sean Jackson's doing at Flinders oh, Park. Yeah. And, um, Perhaps this time when they come up to Div 2, they will be the real deal. Yeah, they're just on the up and up, and I think um, previously when they have managed to, you know, to make the trip up to Div 2, unfortunately it's been followed by a very quick um, uh, you know, sort of relegation back into Div 3. They've sort of never really settled, I guess, in Div 2, have they? So, um, but uh, again, once again, they stand their authority. They said, right, we come up, we, we uh, mean the real deal this time. Yep. So. Um, yeah, I don't know. I actually probably like Flinders Park, to tell you the truth, over, uh, over PAC. Both got over Flinders Park. PAC, of course, were decimated by injuries last year, so if they keep all their players in the park, you never know. Absolutely. Now, the, the final game we're going to look at is the game that is right here at Adelaide Airport Stadium. It's CBC, who I had a first-hand look at. Uh, Darren Jar and his boys last week going down to Paynham by 14 points. Uh, coming up against Athelston, who knocked off Smosh West Lakes. And what I have to determine would be probably an upset. Smosh West Lakes with all the fancy... Uh, the start of the year over the summer, and uh, Aston were able to kick 10 goals 23 uh, against them and still get up. So um, it's going to be a, a huge game. CBC, um, a very young squad. Uh, you've got a uh, young Jarman in there, Andrew Jarman's son. Uh, Stefan? Yep, Stefan Jarman. Uh, Alex Carey, who was uh, formerly on the Greater Western Sydney list, and uh, Christian Puccini still floating around the, uh, the old dog, the young fellow. He's still only four foot seven, but still wins plenty of ball down there. Um, they'll be formidable, uh, CBC, but I just think uh, Athelstan uh, are going to visit Div 3 just for a year. I think Athelstan uh, are going to be the real smokies for this division. Yeah, they don't tend to hang around Div 3 uh, uh, too long. Um, you know, and if they do, they tend to, to go up with pain and come down with pain. So, um, as I said, especially, you know, those battles are going to be really good this year. But, I mean, look, I, I don't know how anyone could have ever written off a team uh, being relegated, um, you know, even over a team that has been in, you know, Div 3 for a couple of years. So, um, I would have never have written Athelstan off, um, and I certainly would not do that again this week. No, it'd be interesting, uh, Rocky Butterworth, see the impact he has on uh, Athelstan coming across formerly from uh, PAC, was he at PAC? Yep. Yeah. Um, against uh, Darren Jarman. Darren Jarman actually really impressed me. He was cool, calm and collected on the weekend. Uh, had a chance to chat with him and I wish him and CBC all the best for the year. Uh, good club and hopefully uh, they can really make a fist of it in Div 3 this year. Well, that's this week's games, Lise. Um, I guess we've thanked everyone already. Of course, thanks to the CEO for uh, taking his time out and going over a few of the concepts and the yeah. ideas and the exciting things that are happening. Absolutely. Thanks again to the farmers for, uh, for having us out there on Tuesday night for the, for the footy trip. Um, next week on Anzac Day, we're doing a bit yes. of an expose for the, I think, the only game being played in the Amateur League on Anzac Day, which is uh, Portland versus Flinders Park, and I believe that's actually down at Portland, so uh, both Tommy and I will be out there and, uh, and we'll pretty much do the full show from Portland Oval. Yes, yes, it's Steamboat versus Jacko, it'll be interesting to see uh, who can get up. Um, we look forward to that one. Now, the rumour has it, Lisa, that the great people at West End are going to be throwing a lot of cartons your way, but I don't trust them in my hands, but we're going to have a lot of cartons to give away throughout the year? We certainly are. So, uh, competitions, it could be uh, giveaways on uh, on footy trips. So, you know, I think I might just dispose of them uh, at my own will, and, uh, and we'll have some more details about how we're going to do that in future editions. So, I mean, Grassroots Online is a show about the clubs. It's for you guys. We want to get out there. We want to... Uh, Put your club in, in the light, give you some TV time and uh, maybe make a few people famous out there if we can. Um, looking forward to a big year, Lisa. Any, Absolutely. Any final thoughts? Uh, my final thoughts are is that we need to wind this up. We've gone on long enough already. Well, if I could just leave you with one final thought. Thank you. <laughs> we'll see you next week, guys. Thanks a lot. Hey, <laughs> mate, uh, did you hear about that rumour about Beer Karma? Beer Karma? You drink one of these and a Victorian cops one? Oh, really? <laughs>
did claim to invent the footy. <laughs> <laughs> That's good.